Hello Grade 12s. Today I'm looking at question 2, the interpenetration and development question from the 2014 paper. The given information is that you've got the incomplete front view. Why incomplete? Of course it doesn't show you what the interpenetration looks like. An incomplete top view, so there's the top view also incomplete. This is a circle, it means we're going to have an ellipse over here. They've asked you to complete the front view, so obviously they want you to do the interpenetration curve. Complete the top view, so they want you to do the ellipse. And that's all they've asked you to do. So the big question for this drawing is where do we get started? Well, the point that we need to start with is the construction. And what do we need to construct? We need to construct the square of 50, which has been tilted at this angle here of 60 degrees. And obviously the angle on this side then would be 30 degrees. So for this construction, what I need to start with is I need to start by drawing that circle and then drawing the tangents. Obviously they've given you that that's 60 degrees, so draw a line of 60 degrees, mark off the distance of 50, an angle of 30 degrees, mark off 50. So you've got two ways of doing that construction. There I have the outline of my square. I'm just going to put in diagonals here to find the center. I'm using a blue pencil and I don't think it's going to be dark enough. That's my center point which now gives me the center line which I can project out just to give me an idea of where my circle is going to be. So I've done that now. I'm going to project my lines up vertically to get the outline of my front view and then work out where my circle is going to be. I've projected my length dimensions from my square into my front view and now I've marked off my height measurement of 100 and I've marked off this height of 20 to where the base of my circle is. Now what I'm going to do is mark off my circle diameter. So if I take this has to be the base so I'm just going to project that line across. I now project a 60 degree line. And on that 60 degree line, I need to mark off my distance of 54, which was the diameter. Now I'm just going to use this line then to find the center point of my circle. So that's at a distance of 27 and draw an auxiliary view of the circle. There I've got my projection for my circle. So this circle being drawn here would be an auxiliary view. In the notes it tells us that the edge of the pipe is 20 millimeters away from this edge. So I'm going to mark off that distance of 20. And then and that would give me this edge of my branch pipe. Now I'm going to move into the top view to complete the top view as my first aspect here because what I want to do is the construction of the ellipse. So we're going to draw the same diameter circle down here at the bottom so it was that distance of 27, so the diameter of 54. 
here is where my center line is and I'm now going to just draw a circle Yeah, this should be in construction lines. I've just drawn a little bit darker so that you're able to see that. Now, with any circle, when we're trying to find the points, the important thing that we need to do is divide it up into our 12 segments. In other words, our 12 pizza slices. You're going to do that same thing in the auxiliary view in the front view. So there are my pizza slices drawn in the auxiliary view, in the front view, and in the top view. Now, you know I like to label my numbers so that we could follow them. So, please remember this auxiliary has been rotated so that that central vertical axis is at an angle of 60 degrees. So. What I would now want to do is label using that as my highest point and it doesn't really matter from there if you want to label clockwise or anti-clockwise that won't make a difference. I'm now going to project these pizza slices down to where it touches the branch pipe and just extend them because we're going to need them later to find uh, points for our curve of interpenetration. There I have projected my different points down to where it hits the edge of the branch pipe and extended them into the front view which we'll use later. Now, let's just follow the numbers. So, this point will give me point 0. This point is 1 and 11, 2 and 10, 3 and 9, 4 and 8, 5 and 7, and 6. Now, the most important part if you are doing the numbering here is understanding the numbering then in the top view because if you mix up the numbers in your front view with your top view you're not going to get the correct shape now the ellipse the diameter stays the same so the ellipse should be looking a little bit like an egg like that and what we've got to try and understand is that this is the highest point of the circle. So the highest point in the circle is going to be the center of this shape. So you need to, on the center of the shape, label your numbers accordingly. Okay, so here I'm going to start 0, 1 and continue labeling my numbers around there ok so that's very important why, we, why does it work like that? well what we need to understand that the auxiliary view here is perpendicular to the branch pipe but if we had to rotate it to what we would actually be seeing, it would give my circle over here with zero being the highest point of my circle. Okay, so please, that's quite important. Because the auxiliary view has been tilted to be perpendicular with my branch pipe, that's why the numbering is slightly different. Okay, and we need to get that shape as our answer. So now what we're going to do is get this ellipse shape. So now to get the ellipse. I'm going to go one step at a time. You can obviously project more of your points 
if you feel confident about what you're going to do. This is what I refer to as the theory of two points. I need one horizontal line coming from my auxiliary view here in the top view. And I need a vertical line that I'm going to project from my branch pipe in the front view. So I'm going to have a vertical line and a horizontal line, one point, two points, and that will give me the actual point that I need. So I'm going to start with point zero at the top of my shape. So I've projected the top of my shape, and here is the zero from my top view. Where they intersect, that gives me point zero. Now let's do point one. So here's point one. And I go to point one in the front view. And I project that line down. And there gives me point one. Now I'm going to do point two, the same process. Project my horizontal line. There's one point. Go and find my vertical line. There is point two. Point three. And I continue following that same process around my shape. So I've projected all my points down and I found the intersections from my one point and my second point for each of these. As you'll see, I've also projected these to where they've hit the actual square because that's going to give us the curve of interpenetration which we're going to then have to project back into the top view. Now this is our ellipse shape and you can use your French curve or flexi curve to get the shape. So try and get this a nice curve. So at the top here, a nice little rounded edge like that. And then here, nice little smooth curve. This will be quite easy to get with your okay, and then again a tight little turn. There's a bit of a bump there. Okay, so that would give us our ellipse shape. Try and use your flexi curve or French curve to get a nice smooth shape there. I've just gone over the outline now in pen, just so you can hopefully see a better idea. I didn't do that to my ellipse though, and I have inserted the center line. So now we're ready to move on to find the curve of interpenetration in the front view. What I'm going to do in the top view though is just mark the points that we need in the top view. So we can follow our theory of two points. That is point 9. This is point 10 and 8. This is point 7 and 11. Here is what I refer to as the turning point. We're going to have to find that, calculate that. This is 0 and 12 and 6. This is point 1 and 5. This is point 2 and 4. And 
this is point three. So we now know where the points hit the square and we can project them up to meet with our projections from the auxiliary view. The theory of two points. So to find the theory of my two points, what I'm going to start by doing is finding the points up to the turning point. Because anything after this turning point we can't actually see and that's going to become hidden detail. Okay, that's the corner of my shape. So up until there I can see all these points when I'm looking from this direction. Anything after the turning point will be hidden detail. So I'm going to find these first lot of points up to my turning point. I'm going to start with this left edge point. So this is point 9. So what I'm going to do, the theory of two points, I need to project point 9 up vertically. And I need to find where point 9 comes across from the auxiliary view on my branch pipe. Okay, so there's line 9. So I need to project this intersection where it hits here in the top view. I'm going to project that up to hit point 9. And there is point 9. We're going to do the same thing on this side down. So our next point here is point 10 and point 8. So we need to find here is point 8 and here is point 10. And we project those lines up to cut those lines. Okay, so here is point 10. Here is point 8. The next point is point 7 and 11. So here is line 7. Here is line 11. This is also why it's been very important to make sure your numbering is accurate. So there's point 7, there's point 11. Now, the next point we're going to do is the turning point. And this is going to take a little bit more working out. In order to find the turning point, an inaccurate method would be to project it to where it cuts the ellipse and take the lines up and then project them down. I'm going to use a more accurate method. So what we do is we take where the turning point is and we project that to where it hits in our auxiliary view. We now take the measurement in our auxiliary view. So, how can I do that? Find the axis of symmetry. So this could be point 9, or if you wanted point 3. Take the measurement from point 9 to the turning point with your compass, and that should give you the same distance. Now, take that to your front view. So in the front view, remember I had put my compass at point 9. So I go to the same point in my front view, the auxiliary view of my front view. Put my compass point at 9. And now I'm going to mark off my turning points. In that auxiliary view. Okay, so here's the turning point, and here is the turning point. We can now project those lines down to hit the turning point from our top view. So there's my turning point and turning point. 
Okay, so there is my shape that is visible to me. And I would probably just put it in now so that we've got one part solved. So there I've joined up my points from the top turning point through the points that are visible to my bottom turning point. So what's left for us to do is to go from the turning point to the rest of the points in my curve of interpenetration using the same method. So the same process, take the numbered points and project them to their respective points that we projected from the auxiliary view. So let's find the back of these shapes. I'm going to try and use my blue pencil again just so that I know these are the points that need to be in hidden detail. So here is 0, 6 and 12. So here is 0 and 12. And at the bottom that will be 6. I don't know why that line's not drawn in there. So that gives me my lowest point, and that gives me my highest point. Let's follow our next point. So point 1 and 5. So project them. Here is point 1. And point 5. Very close to our point 7. Next points two and four. So here is point four. Here is point two. And where was the edge here? It's point three. And there's point three. Okay, so hopefully you can see those different shapes now. So there are my different <coughs> points. Excuse me. And you could have labeled them if you wanted to. I haven't labeled them. I've just marked off where they are. Now it's a matter of joining them. Remember this is behind the shape. So all of this would be in hidden detail. So what we need to remember here is there was a turning point and it still had to come to the lowest point. So this little edge here would have been hidden detail. The same at the top. From the corner to this edge would be hidden detail. Very small little piece of hidden detail. <clears throat> and where that comes to the top of the shape, you've got an even smaller piece of hidden detail going from the edge of the shape to the back at our angle of 30 degrees. <clears throat> so that tiny little part which is the bottom of our circle going to our point and the sloped line coming from our turning point. The same on that side, the turning point going to the highest point of our circle and the horizontal 30 degree line at the top of the branch pipe. Okay, so joining up the rest of the po points. A little bit trickier being in hidden detail. Very tight curved at the bottom here and joining up to that edge. There we have the completed interpenetration curve in the front view. So that would be the completed front view with the complete curve of interpenetration. I've included the center line in the circle there. 
there is the completed top view with the most important aspect there, the ellipse. In the mark allocation, getting this ellipse correct was worth 12 marks. So that is almost 30% of this drawing.